Dr. Robert M. Gagne, August 21, 1916 to April 28, 2002. Some quick facts about the good doctor. He earned his bachelor's degree from Yale in 1937 and his Ph.D. from Brown in 1940. He is the author of over 100 articles and several books, including Essentials of Learning for Instruction in 1974 and The Conditions of Learning in 1975 while he was at UC Berkeley. He was drafted to the Army Air Corps during World War II, where he worked with Arthur Melton, James Gibson, and Paul Fitz, all preeminent psychologists. They worked on air crew classification, psychomotor tests, and other important things. The, he then moved on to the Air Force Personnel and Training Research Center after the war, when he became a civilian, and ended his career at the Department of Educational Research for Florida State University. Gagne had five types of learning outcomes, from verbal information, which is declarative language and organized knowledge, to intellectual skills, which are procedural skills, concept rules, and problem solving, cognitive strategies, which are the student's personal way to learn, think, guide, and act, to attitude, which is an internal state, or emotions, which influence behavior, and finally, motor skills, which are physical skills, which when done with smoothness and timing, equate to motor skills. He had a hierarchy of learning, Gagne did, which started with signal learning, the lowest level, moving on to stimulus response, chaining, verbal association, discrimination learning, concept learning, rule learning, and problem solving. But what do these all mean? Signal learning was the simplest form of learning, and it is similar to Pavlov's classical conditioning. Examples are dogs salivating when they hear a bell, or withdrawing our hand when we touch a hot object. The second level is stimulus response learning. During this level, uh, which is similar to Skinner's operant conditioning, Precise responses to specific stimuli are given. Examples are physical movement training, such as animal training, and language ac acquisition, such as toddlers saying mama, or a dog learning to walk on a leash. The third level of learning is chaining, and this is where we use complex motor skills. Um, good examples are riding a bike or playing a piano. We are actually linking a sequence of stimuli responses together when we do this. The fourth level is verbal association. It's the fourth level of learning. It is language development skills. This is a key process and includes verbal units or chunking. In its simplest form, it is naming an object and it moves on to translation responses similar to context clues. For example, if I say to you, I want to go to the train, you know that I mean this kind of train and not that I'm going to a training simply by the way I stated the sentence, context clues. Discrimination learning is the fifth level of learning, and this is within a system providing an appropriate response to similar stimuli even if there is interference. A good example of this is a teacher learning her children's names in a classroom, even though there are similarities to the children, even though they may have similar names or similar attitudes, she can discriminate and learn their names. The sixth level of learning is concept learning. This is providing a consistent response to different stimuli within a common class or category to generalize or categorize or classify. For example, um, this brief chart says living things, plants, or animals. From there, we can break it down to carnivores, dogs and wolves, or herbivores, cows, or plant-eating animals, and grass, which of course are plants. The next level, the seventh level of learning, is uh, rule learning, and that's where you learn relationships between concepts and apply them to different or new situations. For example, in this picture here, we have an alligator and a lion, and if I tell you that they're carnivores, you should be able to place them in the appropriate one and state that they are animals that eat meat. If I say to you that elephants and giraffes eat plants only, you should be able to correctly identify that they're herbivores, place them in the herbivore column. And finally, if I say to you that omnivores are animals that eat plants and animals, then 
a, mu a man is an omnivore, then you should be able to place the monkey in the omnivore category if I tell you they eat plants and animals. Moving on to problem solving, which is the highest level of learning. It's inventing a complex rule and applying it to similar problems. To do this, we need prerequisite knowledge. For example, I'm a pretty good cook, so I know that I can actually replace my egg with apple to make apple cake. From that, I should be able to extrapolate at this highest level of learning and say that I can also make apple cookies with no egg and using an apple. Moving on to Gagne's nine events of instruction, we have gaining attention, informing learner of objectives, stimulating recall of prior learning, presenting content, providing learning guidance, eliciting performance, providing feedback, assessing performance, and finally enhancing retention and transfer. Let's move on to the, see how these all work. It's important to remember, I always plug for ADA compliancy, so to gain attention with ADA compliancy on the internet, use headers and make sure you use alt tags for images. For everyone, you can start with an interesting fact, a quote, a story. You can gamify your course, you can ask a question to a dilemma that you've posed, or you can use an interactive component. Number one, gain attention. Number two, inform learner of objectives. Describe the learning outcomes, one to three maximum, and give a detailed explanation of no more than one or two sentences. Provide performance measures, rubrics, checklists, and discussions at number two, inform learner of objectives. <coughs> number three, stimulate recall of prior learning. Review previous material. In a video, a short lecture, or a group discussion, provide a bridge from the previous material to new material, or provide pre-assessment. At number three, stimulate recall of prior learning. Number four, present content. Text and pictures are more likely to be ADA compliant, and they require lower bandwidth, and older equipment is better with it, but they are less engaging. Audio and video requires closed captioning to be ADA compliant, and also requires higher bandwidth and better equipment, but it is more engaging. Number four, present content. Number five, provide learning guidance. In this one, you're going to answer questions students have. You're going to provide supplemental materials such as study guides, guidelines, checklists, rubrics, my favorite examples, and of course, you're going to give that dreaded deadline. For number six, you're going to elicit performance. To do this, you're going to practice with the students on no weight, low credit, or even extra credit assignments. You can use quizzes, homework, draft papers, gamification again, or discussion at the group or the classroom level. Number six, elicit performance. Number seven is providing feedback. You do this in a peer-to-peer -peer tutorial or automated format for everyone. Make sure that you do these. These are very low uh, commitment for the teacher. And then the teacher should, at this stage, make sure that they are providing feedback to those who need it more or to those areas that no one seems to be getting. At this stage now, number eight, you're going to assess performance. To do this, you're going to have a high point value assignment and it's going to consist of a portfolio, a project, or an objective exam, an essay exam, or a combination of both, or the instructor can, of course, come up with their own means of assessment. Number nine, the last one, is to enhance retention and transfer. To do this, the instructor is going to provide a learning review. They are also going to apply learning to new situations. This is very important if we're going to move on to a new concept in the next chapter. The students are going to evaluate their learning, reflect on their learning, and apply the learning to a new situation if at all possible. This is the last stage, number nine, enhance retention and transfer. This Anyone have any questions or comments? Should anyone have any questions or comments, please ask them now. Or if we're not in the classroom, for your convenience, I've also given my contact information below. Finally, we have our references, Gagne's Nine Events of Instruction, Jones A, Five Types of Learning, Matha Shawari, VK, Gagne's Hierarchy of Learning Types, Rothkopf, EZ, in appreciation, Robert Mills Gagne, and Specter JM, Foundations of Educational Technology, Integrative Approaches and Interdisciplinary Perspectives. Thank you and have a great day.